Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Human Bite series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at a very interesting novelty um, in the advanced Karakhan, uh, the classical variation, um, played in the game between Olivia Kilbasa and Svenja Butenant at the Women's Bundesliga just last weekend. Um, I was uh, just uh, on Chess 24, just looking through tournaments as, uh, as I sometimes do, and uh, well, this game caught my eye. Um, White seemed to have played pretty riskily. Black had uh, reacted in a very aggressive fashion. Looked very thrilling, but I was wondering what exactly the truth of it was. And uh, of course, as always, my engines were very illuminating. So um, yeah, let's have a look. I mean, if you are uh, um, if you play the advance uh, Karakhan as White, um, then I definitely think that you need to know this. So... Um, e4, c6, d4, d5, e5, and bishop f5. Um, yeah, the old main line. Um, c5 is actually uh, most often recommended in books nowadays, the uh, the Kinkin Arkel, as it's called. And uh, actually, it was the, the choice of Mihal Bovanik uh, against uh, against Mihal Tal in the uh, in the World Championship. So it's got a very good uh, pedigree and seems to be doing pretty well for uh, for black. Also, a lot of games between Alpha Zero and Stockfish Eight in this line, and uh, well, Alpha Zero played some gorgeous concepts. Uh, just have a look on the uh, on the Game Changer YouTube site and uh, look for Alpha Zero Karakhan Advance, and you're going to find lots of beautiful examples there. Um, Bishop f5, also um, a very good move. And uh, the most common move nowadays is knight f3, the short variation. Always thought, uh, well, when it was first played by uh, by Nigel, you know, it was really thought to be very, very tame uh, indeed. I think uh, Jan Timan called it the uh, short defence, uh, somewhat sarcastically. But, um, you know, the, the idea, the reasoning was, was that, you know, in general, if, if black gets the light squared bishop outside the pawn chain, surely black doesn't have any problems anymore. But, um, well, in in actual fact that bishop can turn out to be a target for uh, white's pieces or uh, even the advance of white's pawns um, and um, well black has some difficulty developing these uh, kingside pieces and um, there's too few squares on the uh, on the kingside for too many pieces and um, also not quite obviously but um, you know um, yeah, the absence of the light square bishop from the queen side makes the queen side weak. So b7 is weak, but also when you play uh, c2 to c4 attacking the centre, the, well, the centre sometimes lacks a little bit of uh, light square protection. It's very subtle, and um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it just seems to be a really strong line. And, uh, well, Black's um, uh, tried all sorts of uh, different stuff. There's a, a quick c5, which uh, often encounters uh, an equally quick c4. Um, but um, um, yeah, there are also other ideas based around just trying to manoeuvre with the pieces. And this is what uh, Black does in this game. So knight e7, castles, and now knight g6. Little bit awkward with that um, um, bishop on f5 um, because, uh, well, it doesn't really have a, a retreat square anymore. But, uh, well, it could go to uh, to e4 or g4. And, well, you know, the idea is just to get this uh, this bishop out of the way. And then, well, either you'll castle and uh, or you could even retreat the knight to h8 if you need to. Or you could, before castling, you could play knight f8 to d7, for example. Um, yeah, I mean, all these maneuvers take a long time. But, of course, black center is very, very solid there. So, you know, that does give black uh, some maybe some extra time for um, um, yeah you know for, uh, uh, for 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 peace maneuvers just to get uh, sorted in the opening now uh, actually um, Kilbasa had played this uh, this line before um, and um, played the move g3 which is uh, quite interesting just uh, covering the f4 square preparing knight bd2 and also maybe thinking about playing h4 to h5 um, led to a draw against uh, the strong player uh, Te Sakayan in, um, uh, in a blitz game. Um, but uh, here, um, White played uh, a move that um, had been played by uh, um, a very strong player, um, A4 in this position. And this is a very common idea in the um, um, in the. Uh, uh, in the in the Karakana's white in this line, and uh, um, I think we saw it actually in uh, in um, a season twenty three super final game between um, Leela and Stockfish. Just you know this the strength this idea playing the pawn up to a five. Um, so knight d seven played a five, and now black played the very sharp f six, striking back at the e five pawn. So I mean you know what does this pawn on on uh, on a five do? Well, first of all, it can give white the idea of playing a six, just to loosen up the uh, the queen side light squares. Remember queen side light squares. Well, without the bishop light squared bishop protecting them, they might be weak. 
Um, another idea is that you can play uh, c2 to c4, and after something like d takes c4, bishop takes c4, you can imagine, the knight can't come round b6 to d5 because we prevented it with a5. And, uh, well, in actual fact, these two possibilities I've mentioned, a6 and c4, they've both been played by, uh, by strong white players. Um, after a6, actually, Stockfish wants uh, b5 to stop white from playing c4, which I thought was quite neat. Um, c4, yeah, the engines were not too worried about it. Uh, um, I think you can simply uh, take on e5. But uh, what Kilbasa plays is um, a novelty here um, that's uh, got the uh, the stamp of approval from uh, from Stockfish and Dragon, and that's simply to play the move knight to e1. Uh, knight to e1, what is the idea there? Well, I mean, it's all about what we've been talking about, really, about the light-squared bishop being short of squares, because now uh, white is threatening to go g4, and after bishop e4 to play f3, and the um, the bishop is trapped. And um, uh, actually, very hard for uh, for black to to do much about that. Um, H5 was uh, something that my engines were were reasonably keen on, but um, but then we play F4, and uh, well, you know, uh, we've consolidated our centre, which is very nice. So this move F6 is not actually achieving anything. Um, we could have a threat of something like Bishop takes uh, uh, H5, and um, well, if you play a move like C5, then C4 breaks open the uh, the centre. You know all those themes coming along there, and uh, well, this was um, uh, but you no know, dragon was winning from stockfish and stockfish from dragon. Uh, so basically, this position does look quite difficult. Um, uh, this was how the the game was continuing: knight d2, bishop d3, knight f3, queen a4, queen b6, bishop d2, and uh, yeah, you know we're going to go b4 got this attacking this knight on d7 it's just all a bit unpleasant for uh, for black so h5 was what the engines wanted but to be honest what black played you know when i when i was watching the game i just thought well yeah absolutely f takes e5 g4 but here the engines are just getting unbelievably pessimistic and uh, they start wanting to sacrifice the um uh you know the piece with bishop c2 and all that you know and then say they're minus two or minus three so i couldn't understand it because you know what black played bishop e4 f3 and then e takes d4 f takes c4 d takes c4 that looked like the real way to do it right i mean um you know if queen takes d4 there's bishop c5 and uh, well, I mean, you know, you just give black a couple of moves, knight e5, queen d5, bishop c5, castles. And, you know, I mean, this is looking like a hell of a position, right? I mean, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's three pawns, you know, quite apart from anything. But yeah, the engines were, um, were, were desperately unkeen. And it's just, uh, yeah, just tactics, really. I mean, it's, it's just that, uh, that in this position, white can play the move knight d2, attacking the pawn on e4. And uh, it's just rather awkward. If you go knight c5, um, I play the move b4, um, which is really, really annoying, uh, chasing away the protection of e4. I think d3 was an idea, but I think uh, the engines then were just going to sacrifice the uh, the piece back. And if you move back, then we go uh, knight takes c4, or queen takes c4, and it's just uh, you know horrific for black, really. I mean, just white's just got a huge initiative here. So, um, and if you go e3. Um, then there's various ways of doing it but uh, I mean knight df3 just followed by c3 was one idea um, knight c4 knight f6 and c3 was also very strong you're just breaking up the center black just hasn't got the time to keep this center all together um, so it's yeah I mean it's just uh, yeah I, I mean shocking to me I, I didn't you know I didn't really think that it that uh, you know this this idea could be refuted that easily but you know for the engines this was uh, this was really really bad um, the interesting thing is that um, you know white uh, didn't see that and I, I can imagine because it's uh, it's not something that you'd spot automatically um, white played the move knight g2 uh, probably played to keep the queen out of h4 you know maybe you know white was worried bishop d6 queen h4 um, but now after knight e5 uh, king h1 was played maybe not the best move queen d5 um, actually the engines wanted uh, e3 in this position very much to stop this knight from developing there which i thought was uh, was quite nice but queen d5 is also good and now um yeah actually now white made a number of mistakes uh, played b3 castles and bishop b2 and uh, well if um, if black had just played um, the move e3 
then um, uh, yeah, the engines thought that white, the black was virtually winning in this position. Um, knight h4 is coming in, threatening uh, that. And otherwise, we're just going to go bishop c5, moves like h5, rook f8. You know, just the white pieces are, are just just blocked basically behind this um, uh, this wall of pawns. So um, yeah, it would have been a huge position for black. But uh, well, black played bishop e7, just played a little bit quietly uh, somehow, and um, yeah. Uh, rook takes f8 and then bishop takes f8 and somehow white managed to emerge and uh, eventually made uh, uh, her 300 uh, extra elo points tell but uh, yeah it was a very brave decision from black you know surprising to me that, uh, that it wasn't actually even just sort of vaguely you know objectively okay for black um, and yeah you know probably uh, just a, a huge chance miss there with um, e3 um, you know black's uh, boldness could have paid off and she could have got a i think you know would have been very close to a, a fantastic victory there but uh, still very interesting opening play and um yeah a very interesting novelty from white there uh, that i think basically uh, makes this line more or less unplayable knight e1 just uh, exploiting the fact that that knight square bishop is really short of squares there we are hope you enjoyed that if you enjoyed it why not give a like subscribe to the channel take a look at my new course the silicon road to chess improvement and otherwise, thanks very much for watching and hopefully see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.